This episode of Philly Fame TV is sponsored by Top Dog Law. Now y'all already know who to call for any accidents or injury cases. If you want that top dollar, you better get that top dog. You can hit him up on Instagram at Top Dog Law or visit his website www.topdoglaw.com. Alright, welcome back to Philly Fame TV once again. Thank y'all for tuning in. I mean, if this your first time tuning in, I mean, make sure y'all like, subscribe, you know, share all that good stuff. You know, if you've been tapping in, you know, from the get-go, I appreciate it. You know, for sure, for sure. We in for another special edition, special episode. What happened to Quilly? And where is he now? I mean... This is episode 12, you know, now I got to put the, the, this disclaimer out there for, for those who ain't been tuned in. This might be your first time watching one of these episodes. This is not going to be like the official Quilly story from beginning to now for us, like this whole life story documentary type John. Like this more so going to be like, you know, I'm going to have some of his story, you know, obviously you know, but I'm going to include a lot of my experiences, how I know him, you know, me working with him and stuff like that in here. Like, Quilly's story real, like, you know, interesting, mind you. Like, Quilly been in the mix for, like, damn near 20 plus, know what I mean? He started real young, know what I mean? And, and so his story go, you know, for a long time, a lot of stuff happened, you know, it's a whole lot that we could cover with Quilly's story and it'd take like three, four hours to do it, you know what I mean? But I'ma just try to focus on, you know, the highlights and the main stuff people know about as far as Quilly. I mean, and, and it's gonna be a lot different than the other previous episodes that I did because we ain't get a chance to do a sit down Quilly interview where I could base a lot of the stuff off of, you know, the information and stuff like that. Like I did with Head, did a sit down interview with Head of like two and a half hours. Like we needed to do a John with Quilly, but we ain't get the chance to do one of them Jones. And, you know, doing research on Quills, a lot of different interviews and stuff he did, but it's like clips and stuff. Ain't nobody really get his whole real story. So with all that said, man, I'm gonna give y'all, you know, Quilly's story from what I know. You know some of his background and all that and then i'm gonna give y'all you know some exclusive stories as far as like my experiences with him and how i know him and how you know we work together multiple different times how our stories intertwine i got some crazy stories you know from the time where he was around had he and all that because i was around him a lot at that time i mean i got a lot of stuff about that time with them and when quilly separated and was on his own I mean, I got a lot of, you know, stories with, with that. So, you know, I ain't going to get too much with the intro. I ain't going to drag it out too much. We're just going to get, you know, right into it. Um, you know, we talking about, you know, the guy formerly known as Quilly Mills. You know, real name Marvin Aquil Jones. Like, you know, Quilly pretty much been an open book for the most part. Like, everybody who's been following Quilly. A lot of this story you already know. That's why I ain't going to really touch too much on a lot of stuff. But you know he's from Haynes Street, Germantown. I mean, Haynes and Morton, where he grew up. I mean, a lot of people, you know, Haynes Street got a lot of history. I mean, with that with that block and that area and all of that. And a lot of people came from that area, you know, that some of y'all may know about. We interviewed some guys from Haines Street, too, that's on the platform that spoke about Quilly, like Filthy Rich. That's a guy that, you know, was in the streets doing this thing when Quilly was a young boy. Quilly actually mentioned a helmet and a rap and stuff like that before. That was, I guess, old head. Um, you from Germantown, uptown yeah, part of the Hain city. Street, man. Where are you from? Haines yeah. Street, right? Yeah. So that's the block that Quilly rep. Everybody know Quilly because yeah. he got mixtapes called Haines Street and all that. Mm -hmm. So tell them yeah. the relate. I see you got a relationship with him, so tell people yeah. a little bit about that. Like right. Quill, that's my little, that's my that's my youngin, man. Uh back in the day when I was getting my buzz and shit, I was popping. Quill's a little nigga on the block running around doing the shit he do. And and what I wanted to do is once I got on and got my deal and got my distribution deal, I wanted to sign Quill. I mean Quill. I wanted to sign Quill, but uh I wound up falling and shit, but 
Basically, he grew up right across the street from me. We from the same projects and shit. Where? You know what I'm saying? That's my little young nigga. Shout out to Quill. Where? Um, you know, Care, young Care, a yeah, young artist in the city. You know, he from Hain Street too, so he know Quill. Yeah. As you said, you from Hain Street. Yeah. And a lot of people that's tuning in there might be familiar with that street. You right. went through Quill. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. He repped that block, been repping that block for years on a yeah. regular type time. So obviously, you know, you know him. I mean, y'all yeah. got a report or whatever, so. Just let the people know briefly about that. Like, did you know him growing up? Then, so y'all from like, at what yeah, point? Yeah, yeah. I mean, just that me, me growing up, uh, they was like the old heads of the him, a couple of my other boys. They was like the old heads. He was a rapper. You know what I'm saying? Everybody tuned into him. You feel what I'm saying? He hot. He's one of the top rappers in the city, in my opinion. But besides all the other stuff, but he's a good rapper. But yeah, I, he was a he was a, he's a cool dude still till now. I mean, like. And Bang Bang, you know, him and Quilly pretty much grew up together. You know, they had they fallen out, you know, stuff well documented on social media. We actually interviewed Bang Bang. He talked about that too, so, you know. I mean, for a lot of people, a lot of people already know me from, like, being, like, in the entourage. Like, before I was rapping, like, everybody know I used to be with Quilly. Like, like that's the, like, come on. Like, he from my hood, he from my block. Like, he grew up six houses from me, like, my whole life. So, like, you can't tell me. Nothing about like, far as like no uptown rappers, but and you know, niggas already knew what it was. Like I was coolied out. Like Bob, hit the damn headshot. Everybody know. Like I was coolied out. Like you can't tell me nothing about him. Far as like growing up when I would when I would talk rap with people. Hmm. Coolie from that block. I mean, a lot of guys, like I said, from back in the days, well known Hain Street hustlers. You know. Before he called that the mixtape, you know, that's what they used to call themselves back in the day. I know when I was a young boy up that area, and I mean, that's what I, they definitely was notorious at that way. So, you know, you know, he pretty much talked about his story as far as mom being on drugs, you know, there ain't no secret. He talked about that in multiple raps for years, you know what I mean? Mom Tanya, you know what I mean, he always mentioned her name and stuff like that. And um, as far as his dad, he said his dad was around. He has got a great relationship with his dad. I mean, like, so I don't know what the circumstances was with his dad and his mom as far as them living together and the reason even all that. But I know he, he said definitely mentioned that his dad was around. I mean, his mom was around. She had her struggles with drugs, but she was around. I don't know about siblings and all that. That's one thing I never really heard about, like Quilly having any brothers or sisters. Or, I mean, that's something I don't know, but maybe somebody else that's more familiar might, you know, could mention that in the comments as far as that. Um, I, I recall him mentioning before, like, he went to George Washington High School. I don't know if he said that in an interview or something before, but I definitely remember, like, a minute ago, he mentioned that he went to uh, George Washington. I don't know if he got kicked out or transferred went to another school from there or before that i don't know if he finished school or none of that but i know he definitely mentioned that he went there at one point in time so my first like encounter or hearing about quilly was early early on like so like at the time i was fucking with merc i mean he was running around bad on people this was early and he was trying to get his feet wet and rapping and all that and uh he actually bumped into Quilly, I think, up Germantown somewhere. Random as shit, bro. It's so long ago. Like, I don't really remember all the details vividly, and I hope I'm not misremembering the situation. But I recall, like, them bad on before. I got to double check where Merck can confirm that story. But I believe that's they definitely battled before. And this before Quilly, obviously, was Quilly. But, I mean, he was running around bad on people at the time. So he had a little name for us, like, I mean, up there. But he wasn't really, like... I mean, Quill, yeah, I mean, but he was a young boy, bad on a lot of people at that time, and I believe him and Merck had clashed, like, early, probably, like, 2002, 2003, something like that, right? So, Quilly probably was, like, a young boy, probably, like, 14, 15, maybe, around that time, if I ain't mistaken, like, but, yeah, he was in this battle bag at that time, running around, this is that era, so, like I said, Merck was running around bad on people, I mean, I got, I got in my bag at one point, and was bad on a lot of people, and you know Quilly, I mean, he had some crazy battles. Like as far as like he battled NH before. I mean, he battled um, Vodka before. Like you know, NH talked about him battling Quilly before when he was on his run too. Like, uh, but I bet uh, see a lot of niggas I went fishing for. I caught the ass too. I battled Hattie. I battled Quilly. 
I mean, I, a lot of them motherfuckers I went fishing for, I, I found their ass. So that's like mm-hmm. every rapper from that era at one point in time was on their run, running around finding who was hot and running down on them. So a lot of people that's well known that became cool at some point in time, a lot of them clashed back in those days and a lot of that stuff wasn't on camera. So this was before a lot of that. So, you know, Quilly had clashed with NH, NH talked about that. And, you know, um, Quilly had clashed with Vodka. You know, Vodka a little older. Quilly and um, NH around like the same age, but Vodka a little older. I mean, but Quilly, you know what I mean, was at him trying because Vodka had a buzz, so Quilly was trying, you know. No, no, no What about, because um, I think Quill said this in the interview. He said, uh, you don't bring that up. Yeah, let's bring that up. Let's bring that up. Let's bring that up. to Quilly, too. I, mean, I had to check his temperature the other day on that man. Oh, yeah? About, about that battle? <laughs> uh, listen. I seen that interview. Right. Short story short, this how the, uh, this how the other day worked out. The other day worked out, uh, man, it probably was like a, like a month now, almost a month or somewhere around there. My man, he called my phone on the tip line. He like, yeah, I'm with Quilly right now. And he said he cooked you 15 years ago. I said, you're lying. Put him on the phone. <laughs> I like, put him on the phone. So he like, no, I'm coming to get you. <laughs> but I know him, so I know he's starting. So I'm like, man, I'm not going nowhere. <coughs> I'm not going nowhere. <laughs> but before I can even get that out, he already on the <laughs> <laughs> he already on his way to me. <laughs> so, short story shorter, we go through there, and um, Quilly was doing this documentary. Uh, um, it was a real good look. When I come up, I'm like, Quilly, <sighs> does age matter <laughs> in lyrics? He like, well, yeah, you know. I'm like, listen, 15 years ago, you was 13, 14 years old. I had the city on smash at 19 to show off shit. Now, as hot as you thought you was then, your bars couldn't equivalent. And I'm trying to break this down to him. You need to say, because he high on his horse. And you know he. Qualified. Yeah. <laughs> and, and you know, Quilly a beast, man. I, I don't say none of this stuff to discredit him. Right. You think I'm saying this all straight paper. You think I'm saying, he, you know. So, sure, story short, I'm like, Quilly, he was 14. I was 19. Thank you. I, I, said, I was 19. I, I said, grown men couldn't stop me. Quilly, what you think a 14, 13, 14 year old boy gonna do? You tripping. Right. They're like, no, I, I was cooking your man, and he and uh and you came up, you was hit, and uh you you helped him and all this kind of stuff. And you came in like check, check, and he's like, and we went at it, nobody won. I'm like, Quilly. <laughs> Quilly. Somebody won, Quilly. Stop saying nobody won. Right. <laughs> you dig what I'm saying? We not gonna, you know. But no, it was it was it was it was because because I didn't remember it. I I'm just going off of just my arrogance. You dig what I'm saying? And my just common sense, like, come on man, you couldn't have been, you couldn't have had. Mm-hmm. You dig what I'm saying? But, no, no, I did my interview with Bach. He, he spoke on that too. We talked about the battle with Quilly. And um and Quilly and Hattie actually clashed, you know, early on. And that's how they met, and that's how they got cool. And according to Head, um, after him and Quill clashed, that's when they got cool. And then he actually became a part of Go-Getters. Now, the story goes that, you know, a lot of people know Quilly to have been with Top Shot at first. I mean, then he got down with Go-Getters. That's how most people know the story. That's how Quilly, I think, mentioned it before in the old interview or something like that. But Head, according to Head, he's saying like, nah, that's not how it went. Actually, he was down with them first. I figured he started fucking with me and Cheek and him with Papa Moore. So he started fucking with Cheek and them. And then when Cheek, I don't know if Cheek went to jail, but he was in jail, and this when I started popping crazy. This when we was being on Club Flow and all that shit, so he came to Club Flow and shit, and um, he was down there with Cheek and them. Then he come to my, he, uh, he get booked, I guess. Once he get booked, he come home, and he fuck with us, and buy him on Cheek and them so he could fuck with us. So wait, Quilly was with you before Cheek? Fuck yeah, he was with me first. Like I never knew that. I dropped him off the Cheek house. I, he said, yo, I'm just going to go down here and do some music with him. 
so we can have we can I'm gonna I'm get my I'm gonna get some shit with him so we can have some music from everybody else for our shit and all that. And then he started fucking with them. Now I started seeing him. Shorty ain't come down in a couple days, like real shit. So he kind of explained that in the interview, like he was down with Quidley was down with them first, and then Cheek got hotter. I mean, because he was on the two row for the street shit, head went on it. So when Cheek got hotter, he said, according to head, Quill started fucking with Cheek, you know what I mean? And then that was a discrepancy with that, so. I mean, the only person that could really clear that up probably is Quilly. I mean, maybe Cheek knew something about that, I mean, but Quilly, the kind of, you know what I mean? But, you know, it's two versions, so according to Head, that's his version. Quill wasn't on too rough of the streets, he wasn't on none of that weed, but Cheek was, I mean, Vox was. You know, they from the same area. So, I mean, a lot of people figure like it made sense that he know them from the same area. So he probably would have been down with them first because they probably would have knew him first and all that. But, you know, you never know. Hey, his story could be violent. Like, you never know. Like, all right, so according, according to Head, also according to Head, um, Cheek Head got locked up or something like that. Cheek Head got booked. So that kind of interrupted his momentum and weave that he had going at the time. And then sometime later, Quill ended up getting booked. I mean, and then Quill was locked up, according to Head, again, like there's all this according to Head from the interview. Quill got locked up, and he was locked up when the Head folks. And Head folks ended up connecting him with Quill, Head, connecting Head and Quill, I mean, getting them to communicate. And Head was saying that Quill basically was like, I mean, he was acknowledging that, you know, he left him and, and not like taking accountability for that and saying like when he come home he gonna fuck with the getters again like he gonna get back back down with the getters so when he came home that's when his shots was rolling i mean and so prior to this quill wasn't really on nothing like that no dvds and now like i say he missed two world for the streets weave he wasn't on like none of the early heavy spitters john he wasn't on our john I don't think he was on like the concrete jungle joint that Meek and Reed and them was on. I don't think Quilly was on there. Like, so I think he missed like all of them early DVDs. He was rapping, like I say, he was rapping early. He was rapping like everybody else was rapping. But he wasn't on none of them DVDs for whatever reason. I mean, then when he came home, Headshots were rolling. And that's when he got on that Headshots DVD. I believe that was like Headshots two and a half. And he's outside, everybody on the block down north. I mean, where they used to do the ciphers and stuff at down Bob and them way, on Bob and them block, I mean, down that area. And uh, he went out and started bombing on, I mean, bombed on Cheek, bombed on Reed, just was bombing. I mean, this was in a mix of the, this was the like the early stages, the beginning of the, the headshots versus Touch Money Top Class and all that. So he came home, he jumped right in it, like, I mean, with that freestyle, and that, that freestyle kind of like put him right in the mix and kind of putting right in the spotlight along with everybody else. I mean, you want to come through north, you got paid a visit. Pay a toll, top class, couldn't pay tuition. I'm about to give him hell. Six shots, give him shells. Niggas got school to the game, they should have been in fell. Fuck dollars, man, I've been straight. And yo, the 40 bow naturally high. Shots are in age. Kaboom! I'm the bomb, Lord nigga. Stop wearing about your head and your side, Lord nigga. In the boot all day, wasting time, Lord nigga. Dollars, quilly mills up your grind, Lord nigga. This Lord nigga got me mad as shit. Talking about me on that DVD, now he on Eddie Eddie dick. But I'ma get it now, leave you in that sand, man. man. Pussy, you done did it now, all my niggas can ass. Yeah. yeah, no, fuck it, I'ma go get her. G O G E T T, go get ya. A N a S S, stay with the A R. You wanna make it far, nigga, stay with a vest. If you was up the house, you would've stayed in protect. You was a PC, nigga, when I spray, you get wet. I was on F2, getting husky. Came home, you lost shine, this nigga rusty. Pretty boy, try stun on camera. Young boy, dumb. Shit, pull this gun off. I see you drawing with that lock in. I'm drawing with the tech, my old head with a smack. You just for drawing on the set. Ride with my soldiers, so you know that's major pain, man. Clapping like thunder, need a poncho when I rain, man. Rain, man, ain't as hot as I thought. I'm two tone do rags, we is not in New York. Young boy snitching, get that man out of them courts. We dollars wearing snap cash, green bait snap cash. Hit him with that gap, but that max spin his cap back. You listening like, shit, he's vicious, you ain't a die. I wrote this shit in like 15 minutes. Slide down, so 
Mark West in like 15 minutes. Show him how to ball play. Read Dollar Bull Gay. He a bitch. Make him strip like night on Broadway. And that's the go go. Nigga, you a homo. My block going to join, so it's jumping like a pogo. No, fuck it. I don't want to stop. Let's ride to the beat. Who's Frankie with the grippers going by? Buying some teeth. Fuck beats, man. Buying some sneaks. OG funny something. This nigga off, and I know he bluffing. I got trash dummies on standby, waiting to bang out. They bought them things out. Rain man on, no. Rain man draw. How the fuck you got a body with a wave cap on? I'm on the grind here. My man Dav got the nine here. Light his ass up like Times Square. And no matter what I got in the chrome, this nigga whole style switch what Aaron got on the phone. Oh, what's up, that boy Chico? What's up, brother nigga? I said, what you, hey, yo, what you yo. Look, I ain't a top shotter. You get your top shot. Bullets in his mouth. Brown smoking like a crock pie. Handy. I ain't screaming at him not hot He move an eight ball a day Screaming at his block pie Come on dog, that's enough of that I mean your bitch g spot and she can't get enough of that Stream a quill, that's enough of that We can battle all night Have him screaming, I don't want to rap I'm on the block So you how I flip a bundle strap On the block, knocking all tree like a lumber I'm in the lumberjack jacket like Debo Bet the AR, move his car like repo Hit him with the pipe, see the light like Pico Harder than the concrete, nigga ask Rico Got a lot of raw when I I ain't wearing about Chico. Came home four and a half like I don't. Niggas act so tough. So the act roll up. Grip the six, put his wig like an afro pub. Plus, oh yeah, I fucked your girl. She gave my cousin twirl. Pop fly, I'll get you banged like a puppy girl. 19, baby face like he swell. Stay fly, niggas watching me shit like he's dead. It's only right I give respect. Nigga, Friday, next Friday, in the Friday. I keep attack. Rashi, catch six, you get fouled out. Spray the clip like Jada Kiss. My niggas wild out. Oh, my niggas shout loud. Fuck we chow down. I'm a king. Nigga, you a joker, you should bow down Money over bitches, I don't get them bitches jack In the game, deuce is wild, you think it's pretty pat I'm like, cut the check, cut the dag, what's the deal? You see me on your corner, yo, that's that nigga Quill Eat a dick, I don't fuck with you, nigga That's why I live in handshakes, I ain't trusting you I'm living comfortable, nigga I got connects and clientele I throw my young boys packs, cause I ain't try to sell My black blazing like Bozzy Wells I don't play for Portland, I play for Keith, so I play stores. You on Boz, I need a fucking portion You try to fuck with the kid I can't have it, fuck it, uh, the devil out there like what happened to me It's like they mad at me or some shit, they should be happy for me I'm in your local record store, you should be asking for me I spit a crash so for else, I should charge you a G, chill Nigga, who harder than me? Pussy, I'm hard as nails Bend you up like a bow flex, and you soft and frail <laughs> Fuck is you talking about, nigga? Go get his shit, we flaming in here, nigga Hattie, holla at me, nigga This Coolie Mills right here, nigga When you see me, it is what it is, nigga I can come at you all day, nigga. I know you, Darren. Top class ass. Headshot out of it. Now we're going to take a quick commercial break. Get y'all word from one of our local sponsors. This episode of Philly Fame TV is brought to you by 1212 Plant Based Hair Care Products. These products are good for men and women and best used in barbershops and hair salons. You could pick up some 1212 products at Hair Buzz and Hair Town in Philadelphia. Also, shop online 12haircare.com for all deliveries. Now, back to regular scheduled programming. You know, he had that little shit. Like I said, he was throwing shots at everybody. He had the, the, the notorious Rain Man bar, like the two tone do rags. We was not in New York, John. You know I mean, and I actually did our interview with Rain Man, he, and he spoke about that. You know I mean? so, me and Eddie really never wanted no part of it. It was kind of like cool to watch them go through it. But it was like, we ain't really want to be a part of it because, you know, niggas want to fight. Like, that was, that was our answer to everything. Like, man, I won't fight. Like, fuck this rap shit. So, along the line, I don't know what happened, but I think one day, I, I guess, Quilly dropped the diss rap, I guess, for Joey or with Joey or however it happened. And he said my name and he said the, the famous lines about the do-rag or whatever. And I remember niggas crying, niggas laughing. And me being more from a New York side with the hip-hop, I didn't know that I should respond to Quilly right away. You know what I'm saying? It was more like the shit he said didn't affect me. It, to me, it wasn't it wasn't strong enough. It was kind of jokes. So I looked at the shit like he he got jokes. I'm not responding to jokes. Like he ain't say nothing that was strong enough to even make me want to write back. But what I didn't realize is every moment that you don't say something back, motherfuckers start using that as leverage. Like yo, he getting you the fuck out of here. So over time, you know. I just would watch, I would hear niggas take their shots, and then one day, me, Ree, Eddie, Frankie, everybody, kaboom, we did at the hut, the famous from the muscle joint, and I, you know, I was like, I ain't gonna go with Quilly, 
I'm gonna go with the nigga that I know sentence. I'm gonna go with Hattie. And that joint was one of our most classic joints. Like, we burnt that from the muscle shit down, man. He rocking him ahead, the whole squad. You know, head was good for recruiting the little team. So he always had, like, different members around. I mean, he squatted it. I mean, at one point, like, before D. Jones was rapping, you know, D. Jones was just a part of the squad that eventually he started rapping and all that. So they was rolling, they had a little, I mean, run, like I said, they had the beef with Touch Money, Top Class, that propelled everybody, you know, um, notoriety to another level, because they had everybody attention, the whole city, even people in the industry, you know, 50 Cent and all them kind of people was tapping in with some of them guys. Nah, I mean, even like Quilly, like 50 Cent been knew about Quilly, you know, from that time, from that era, like. So yeah, it was a heavy situation, you know, he had the, uh, the little situation with Bricks, I mean, that touch money now I spoke on, I mean, when Bricks was locked up, like I said, Quilly was dissing everybody, so he's bombing, I mean, he had said something about Bricks or whatever the case may be, and they had a little, almost a little situation at the hut, I mean, now I spoke about that. You know, based on that beef. Yeah. Well, you know, Quilly, you know, he was running with them. He was running with a couple of other little clicks, but at the time, he was running with them. And him and Bricks was going at it. And so this when these were um, go getters and headshots. This was that. Yeah, time? I don't think he was. I don't think he was a go getter at the time. Even though he was a go getter, I don't think he was a go getter at the time. But he was definitely like a head, one of the headshot uh, rappers. But. They they was going back and forth, and then that shit posted had been squashed, and Bricks went to jail, and Quilly wrote some new shit, and you know he dropped that shit while Bricks was in jail. Bricks came home mad as shit, and like this was a little bit after that, and Miz Miz Millions, man, rest in peace, Miz Millions. He was with us, and you know that's his gang. He messed with them outside of rap. So he brought Quilly to the store, and uh, me, Bricks, and Caution was in the store. Caution or Bees, I forgot which one it was. We was in the store. Soon as he walked through the door, Bricks jump up. What's up, man? No, nah, fuck that, man. You gonna drop that shit when I go to jail? Is that number? So they going back and forth, and he like, no, nah, it ain't nothing. Is that number? So I said, listen, let's battle right now. Y'all, y'all, y'all could battle right now. Get this shit done and over with. He was like, no, let me wait for my old heads to get the money, this, that, and all, because, you know, whoever he was messing with at the time, he had the money behind him, betting whatever on him. And, you know, I had the money betting whatever on bricks and all that. And I just was like, you know what? We ain't got to have no camera. We ain't got to bet no money. We could do it right now so everybody could shut up about it. I mean, we could just do this shit. Don't nobody even got to see that shit. He ain't want to do it. And bricks was just heated, real mad. Bricks wanted to fight. He wanted to fight, but you know, we kind of got shit down. Miz was like, you know, stepping in between, stopping that, holding, you know. So, short story shorter, uh, they had the chance to battle right there, face to face, get it over with. Quilly ain't want to do it. And that's when Bricks said, all right, well, fuck it. I mean, he just want to be on some rap shit. He don't want to battle. That's when Bricks uh, wrote the, uh, the Marvin Gaye joint. Uh, I would tell him, let's get it on, but Marvin Gaye. But that was. Yeah, he was he was chilling in the store with me, seeing it in his eyes. He ain't really want to war with you. He didn't want to battle in the middle of the floor with you. He just conversated from the counter to the door with you. Like, yo, we need to do a track together. Cause me and them headshot niggas are whack together. I told you, fuck that. I'll be strapped with nothing. And if Joey rides for you, then y'all getting clapped together. I moved a whole brick when you starved today. Cause it was cheese on my head like Brett Far today. I'm in that 2010 Jack car today. With a tank to hit his neck from like four. Away. I touch money, so for money I make Marvin pay. Give it head shots, shit, that's how Marvin play. Dick Rider, what can Marvin say? Shit, I would say, let's get it all, but Marvin gay. And another little side, new little, little crazy story from the little top class touch money thing is uh, we was filming like Bananas 2 Monkey Bars DVD. Uh, we had got some footage of Frank with the grippers. He was out there with a couple people. I don't think, I think Face filmed it. I wasn't there. So I don't know exactly where it was at, what was going on, but he was going in on that joint. He ended up, I mean, throwing some shots at Quilly on that joint. He spit a crazy little verse. And um, Feast Million was out there. You know, we know Feast from Logan. And Feast and them, Feast and, you know, um, 
Speed we ended up changing the name to B Boy Stance. He's doing the chef shit and all that. Got the food truck. Shout out to him. I mean, but back then he was rapping. I mean, Speed, a couple of other people, they had a little group and they was affiliated with the Shotters at the time. I mean, you know, that's a time when she can and, and Quilly wasn't on, you know, the same accord. So, you know, he was. So, Feast Million was out there with Frank with the Grippers. And mind you, Feast didn't this before Feast knew that him and Quilly was related. They was cousins and all that. He found out later on that they was cousins. But at this time, Frank the Grippers was dissing Quill and Feast was right there. And Feast ended up saying some stuff about Quill too, you know what I mean? But he, like I said, at the time he didn't know they was related. And he was like, pussy must think he I know what you're fat when he spit. It sound like his man blowing his ass. Fuck Quilly Mills. He ain't one of them apes. Jungle with a gun on the waist. Pussy was on the run for a rape. Young in the waist of a brain and half of it dead. One in his face to blow it out the back of his hand. Now Ronnie get clapped with your man. My stars going. Through the driver, leaving passengers dead. Shit, that 60 caliber shower, break them down like algebra. Make his mug twist like Oliver. He's just singing on that back street like Hollister. No hostess, shells coming out the backpack. Now they back up, running back like Tolliver. The shit stacked up, have them bleeding out, they swallow us. Remodel your face and totally demolish you. Roll tissues, polish you for individuals. Individual knowledge your mama, cause a baby. In the box, and she shook cause he rock like powder when it's cooked. When you book, you do not want problems. You saw you my bitch, and I be giving you ass whippers. Willie, <laughs> 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 we know you, Quilly. You a fucking clown. I was just so the F with this fucking clown. You a fucking clown, dog. You, you a fucking clown, like World Jones. When I served your mom, Tanya Jones on A Street, nigga. <laughs> Swirly. <laughs> Fast forward a little while later, they ended up finding out that they was cousins and all that, and they ended up getting tight. And I mean, you always see Feast, I mean, with Quill and a lot of shit, but Feast book right now, so shout out my boy Feast, Free Feast. I mean, but when he was out, I mean, you go see him with Quill all the time, so that was just a crazy little story too, I mean. Now, back to the Touch Money Top Class, Beef and all that, so you know, Quilly was in the middle of it, obviously. You know, he was throwing the shots at niggas and all that. And his, his bars for niggas, but a lot of people ain't really respond back to Quilly. He just had that, you know, the little drone with bricks. I'm on bricks, you know what I mean? But he ain't really had a whole lot of, he wasn't really a big part of the um, the beef as much as like Had was, cause that was mainly like, you know, Hattie, and Reed, you know, Meek was in the middle of it too, with Meek and Reed, and then, you know, it's Meek and Head and Reed, you know what I mean? And then, you know, we know the story as far as Meek and Book, and then, you know, it was mainly like the Head and Reed thing, then Gilly come on and squash that, you know what I mean? So, Quill had a small little, nice little role in that, but wasn't as major of a role as them, but it definitely brought in light and attention and got his weave up, I mean. So fast forward, fast forward a little bit. Um, I don't know if it was at the time, I don't think this was at the time he was beefing. It might be around the same time, but my first like real interaction with Quill that I can remember, like I say, he battled Merc before, but I ain't really interact with him more. I mean, like that was just them battling for real. If that did happen, my, if, I mean, like I said, I, I do remember so so long ago, bro. Like you know, but I, I definitely believe that happened. I mean, you know, so I'm tweaking if I if, if I'm wrong, but I, I I don't think I'm wrong. So, but again, like I said, I didn't interact with him at that time. But my first time really like interacting with him, I believe, is when him had this probably like 2007, probably 2008. Him and had had um, pulled up. You know, we had to stand down, down the edge. I mean, if you know, you know. Uh, they had was riding past, I think he was driving in a truck. And he had seen us out there, so he had pulled over and hopped out. It was him and Quill that came over and hollered at us and all that. I mean, we gave him some shirts and all that, he threw them joints on. I mean, they slid out. So that was my first time really, like, that I can remember, like, really, like, interacting with him, talking to him, you know what I mean, all of that. 
So fast forward a little bit. I mean, we, we actually get cool. I mean, we already was new head and all that. So had we knew head from back club flu days, but being still just now me and Quill getting cool because on the strength of the relationship with head, I mean, we start, I mean, getting the ball rolling for us doing some work together. Now, ironically, at the time when we about to start working on our first, I mean, footage with Quill, cause like I said, we got footage with Head before, and I mean, on Bananas 1 DVD. But him and Head was together, now we was gonna get some footage with them two together. Now, ironically, at the time, they was going through it with Meek. Just at that time when they was beefing with Meek, know what I mean? So, now let's jump back to how, you know, the whole beef with Meek kind of started, I mean, as far as like, what I can remember and based off the stuff that, that was said, I mean, that I seen when doing a little research and getting some information for this job, like, so it's a little up in the air, so it's still two sides of the story, so I'ma just go with, I'ma explain the side from Quilly and Head perspective, cause I ain't get meek perspective. I mean, I got Quilly and Head perspective on this, how kinda how it started. Um, so based on what they were saying, I mean, it's, it's a couple different versions to it and a couple different layers to it for us. Them dissing each other, they dissed each other at different times on different stuff. Cause mind you, they all was cool before, obviously, like they got songs and stuff together. Like, they got a couple bangers and stuff together. Like, even Quill got on the drum with, uh, he was dissing, you know, re and them on the song with, uh, where, where, where Meek Mill and that nigga Lil was going in and out. Had he was on that joint, and then he jumped on that joint. I mean, he's shot. Uh, uh, it's Meek Malia. I be on the north side, banging with the wild boys, balling with the big ass revolver, just like a cowboy. And I be on the south side, niggas that don't joke. They savages with big automatics like they Robocop The rifle got the scope and top Matt got the shoulder stop Infrared hit his head Body like a polka dot Lil' bad broke the tape Won't you hold his head down? Why the duck take the space? I know this nigga scared now Smack him up with his safe Show us to the bread now Smack him up, fuck the case Put his ass to bed now yeah. Your man eating and I'm watching his watch My man creeping and he plotting the chop I got shooters on the bottom and the top of the block You boxing like three hots in the cot And on the real, really, really my man You said you really your fan They call you little, you not really your man Boy, go back I'm the one with the gun on his thigh I'm a grown ass man and you younger than Bob I'm so Sick. I need to see a doctor Punch after punch, I need to be a boxer Biddy strip me down and leave me in my boxers I'm so fly, I'm leaving in the chopper Okay, yeah, we all in here Meek Mills, Joey Jahaz, Lil You know I'm in here, Queen Mills But I'm fucking with me, check this out Check it, look I ain't model with no ice I'm model with the pipe Dripping the full pound like a throttle on the bike Making noise like a banshee Riding like a raptor Read when I see you on sight I'ma smack ya You fucking actor You should get an Oscar When I grip the knee man be screaming like an opera First round was a teaser I ain't even finish you You was bitching over the churn Do what men would do I put an end to you Close the casket You won't win You a hopeless bastard Pussy you So I mean they got stuff together And they was riding together But at some point I mean, some type of tension or something happened, and I think it might have had something to do on some, comp for the most part, Quilly said it was competitive from his side, and I'm thinking it had something to do with the name, too, like, Meek Mills, Quilly Mills, I mean, like, so, I mean, like, it might have been people on both, in both camps, it was a little tension there, even with Head, like, so, long story short, because I don't want to ramble on the body, I'm going to just try to get straight to the point if I can with it. Like, something, I don't know who threw the first shot, somebody threw the first shot, but according to them, Meek threw a shot, Quill responded, he threw a couple shots back, I mean, then Meek wasn't responding as much, I mean, then at some point in the time, Meek started going ahead, now, 
had said Meek started going at him based on like it was like some back and forth blog type of stuff and because had it because Quilly and Meek was going at it I think had might have said something in reference to that like Quilly probably like Big and Quill up on there and he had called uh, Meek Shorty or something like that and Meek ain't like that so the tension was already there because Quilly and Meek was going, I mean, throwing shots back and forth. So half, initially, he said he was staying out of it. He wasn't going, I mean, even though Quilly and Meek was going through it, he said he was maintaining his relationship with Meek and wasn't going, I mean, jump in it. I mean, and he said he didn't tell Quill to diss him. He actually told Quill not to diss him, but you know, Meek threw a shot, so Quill was only right that Quill respond. And Quill threw like, he had like three tracks on one of them tapes he dropped. One of them, Hain Street Hustle, I think it was Hain Street Hustler 3. Yeah, Hain Street Hustler 3. He had like three disses on there going at Meek. I mean, so that was a crazy little time. So now back to the to the um, the DVD situation, Benz, though, like that's kind of how I started you know, and eventually, like I said, Meek start going ahead, and then them two start going at it, and you know, because Meek, Meek felt like probably at the time, Head was the bigger name, obviously the bigger draw, and it made a bigger, bigger situation as opposed to Quill. So eventually, he stopped kind of like going at Quill and really start going ahead for real. I mean, like, so that's what that was. So once I you know, link with them to do the DVD. We was doing Bananas 3.5 at this time. And them two was hosting it. Like, I mean, they was, they was co-hosting it together. Head was mainly hosting it. And it was co-hosted by Quilly, my man. So like I said, the time they going through it with me. We wasn't obviously getting them on there for that, but this is just the period of time it was. And as uh, soon as I mean, they, they down at North and, and some crib or whatever, or some studio. It was like a studio crib. I think it was just a crib. I mean, if I ain't mistaken. So me and my man Tay, shout out to my man Cousin Tay. We we slide down there. I mean, and at the time, they going through some shit. I mean, in the streets and some hood shit. That ain't had nothing to do with me. Because when we pulled up, we pulled up in like a bombed out Crown Vic. There was a bunch of niggas outside, like, I mean, some heady homies all on the car and shit trying to see because the tent was dark as shit, and I mean, it was bombed out. So a lot of niggas were all looking at the car and shit. So when we get out and we go to the crib, then they realize we was for head and shit. Niggas came, like, I mean, and you could tell, like, they had shit going on. And basically, had told us, like, yeah, I mean, they going through some street shit out there. Like, niggas had guns and shit, and I thought they had, he might have had a strap on him, too. Like, no bullshit. Like, that's how they was carrying it, I mean, but... Soon as we walk in, I mean, before even before I even see any of that, I mean, as far as the straps and niggas come back in there and all of that, before that even happened, I skipped this part. Soon as we walk in, upstairs, upstairs, when we walk in a the room, them niggas is filming. They doing, just at the time, like I said, they was going through with Meek, so they was dropping blogs back and forth, like, upload for upload. Meek upload some shit, then Quill and Head upload some shit. And then Meek come back, and then maybe he was going back and forth on YouTube. So at the time we was walking in, they was doing these joints with Flame the Boss. Like, Flame the Boss was documenting a lot of this shit at the time. And uploading the Flame the Boss thing. He was making beats and shit for him, too. They was rapping on his beats and shit. And he was fucking with the camera shit. So he was, I mean, doing the blogs and shit for him. I throwing them on YouTube with them going at me. So when me and my man Tay walk in, they filming as soon as we walk in. And at the time they filming, they talking about Meek like right then and there as soon as we walk in the door, camera rolling. I mean, they talking about Meek. And mind you, we come in there so they can so I can get them on our shit. They already filming for some other shit. They still gonna do our shit, but they doing that shit first. I mean, so they pulled me right in it like because they was already talking about the situation with Meek. That's at the time when he first came home, and I mean he was on house arrest and he was in a crib. And he was doing a blog with I think DJ Difference that can't stop, won't stop joining if I ain't mistaken. And he was talking crazy, basically going at them. I mean, and that's when he had the money showing the money in his hand. And he's like, hey, counting this money, this money ain't we my mind and all this, my man's and all that. I mean, but I mean he was just popping shit. And they basically on that part, 
that I came in, they was talking about that part and pretty much used me for an example and kind of pulled me in it. But he basically had, was basically saying, like, no, we ain't, we ain't putting them in. I'm just using them for example. We about to film. He basically let that be known, like, we about to film his shit. But he kind of put me in it at the time. So that was kind of a little crazy John too, like, kind of walking into that. So after they was done filming, talking their shit, going at, going at him on that John. That's when they stopped recording. And I mean, then we started talking a little bit. Like I said, some of his homies came in. That's when he seen the straps and all that. And he was t- kind of telling me like what they was going, what was going on, what they was going through, and why niggas was all looking at the car and shit like that. So then we started filming, you know, Fire John, like for Bananas 3.5, and they was hosting it. And you know, a lot of stuff he was talking about in there, he was talking about the situation with me. Like I said, because that was the active situation that was going on. So he's pretty much explaining, you know, his point of view. I mean, how he feel about it, what was going on with it. Gave some bars, Quilly popped his shit. Then another separate scene, Quilly gave us some bars. So, you know, that was a crazy little drum for that time. Like, that was a crazy time period. Like, they was real animated, entertaining, like going back and forth with the blogs. Like, if you remember that time, that was a crazy time for me. And I just happened to, you know, catch that and document that and be around at that period of time. Like, I ain't really getting no meek side at that time. It was like, cause I had just a better relationship with Head. And I mean, you know, through that, that's how I built a relationship with Quill. I mean, so, you know, I know Meek, Meek cool, and one from Clubsville too, but Head was more like around, more, I mean, so I seen Head more, talked to Head more, so, you know, I mean, we just was cooler, so, so I wasn't nothing towards Meek, you know what I mean, and I was always hoping like that, I hope he'll, you know what I mean, look at me like, oh, he must be on their side of the all that, I was just neutral, bro, I just, you know, fucking with them at the time. So, fast forward, that was Bananas 3.5. That was probably like um, 2009, I want to say, at that time, maybe, like 2009. And then the next year, 2010, that's when we dropped Bananas for Silverback season. And that was like a game changer. I mean, that was a crazy game changer. And again, they're still documenting this stuff with, with Meek and, I mean, Quill. I mean, and had like that little situation. They had a couple scenes on that DVD with them talking about that stuff. Like that joint was crazy. Like, I mean, so big season had a lot of crazy footage on there. That's the joint that had the Cicero talking about, you know, Cosmic Kevin, Charlie Mick, and Meek and all that. So that was like a, you know, a legendary joint. And, you know, the scenes with Meek, I mean, the scenes with Hattie and Quill definitely was crazy because. It was addressing all the stuff that was going on as far as the beef and the stuff that um, was being said about them, you know, from Meek and all of their side. So one of the things they was addressing was like, you know, it was a little rumor going around about Quilly catching a little rape case and all this, that, and the third. So they addressed that on there. You know, they was addressing a bunch of shit on that, John. So. I'm crazy too, them bitches be on my dick, but they be on my dick on the norm, but on the norm they be on my dick, but they be on my dick when I'm a fly boy too, like, you know, <laughs> picking up my niggas, like, girl, you know I mean? cause like, if you a fly boy, you definitely gotta like this shit, but that's another, that's another chapter, we don't get into that, and niggas like, gotta come down at the fish fry too, man, early, early, shit, they know I, I came through, that shit was early, doing one thing, the first time early, I come through, cuz, early, early, on a, on a bar side of adult, on a adult, we, we drinking, we, we having a good time, this is a good music, you feel me? Really? Just having a good time. Ain't nothing stupid happening or none of that. Like, that shit was just love when I went there. What I'm talking about this is you so far, I'm trying to What are you on this? Let's talk. This is y'all's segment. This is what y'all talking about. Whatever y'all want. Now, what's going on with y'all niggas? Y'all tell me what y'all want. I'm like, so worried about saying one little thing or two little things about it. Trying to find something wrong. Y'all can't find nothing wrong, though. Y'all going there. Y'all trying to look for shit. But y'all can't find nothing wrong. All you shit check out. Niggas try to say, yo, Quilly's scraping bitches or something. I heard some bullshit like that. All you gotta do is go look on Megan Ball, type in Marvin I Quill Jones, and his face will never pop up on nothing. Name Marvin Jones, you can find it. It ain't hard to find it. Type that in. If you a rapist, you got the you got to register every year. Now, at the end of the day, stop saying shit that's fraudulent. Say some shit that's real, like. Y'all say something like this. A nigga a rat, a nigga snitching. You gotta have paperwork. 
that was a crazy DVD, like, and, and they played a major part in it, like, as far as their content and their footage, you know what I mean, like, that they contributed to that joint. Being still, like I said, this was at the height of them going through it with me, from Bananas 3.5 to now Bananas 4, so the big season. So, you know, everything was good with them, they was, you know what I mean, they was a crazy little tag team doing their thing. And then, you know, fast forward to uh, the next year. So, back season two, come out 2011. We get um, both of them on there, but this time we get both of them separate. This at the time when they going through, they going through what they going through. Like, this is the beginning of that. So, so back season one, they was together. And then the following year, so back season two, you know, we got both of them separate. But then still, you know, we had a, a close rapport with them. I mean, a personal relationship with them. I ain't really ask them about each other. So when I got Quill on there, I ain't really ask him nothing about Head. When I got Head on there, I ain't really ask him nothing about Quill. I mean, it was mainly about, you know, Silverback Season 1. That was, that's what Silverback Season 2 was based, was based on, everything that happened on Silverback Season 1. As far as everything people was talking about on there, the politics, what was going on, it was a crazy documentary. If you've never seen that, John, you gotta see it, bro. It was game changer, but it was pretty much documenting the shit that was going on in the city at that time. There was crazy shit going on in the city at that time. So, Silverback Season 2, I pretty much asking everybody how they feel about what niggas was talking about on Silverback 1. Fuck around, drop New Wave Volume 2 with just the Flyboys on the cover or some shit like that. Early. Early. It's some crazy shit. Get my gear head to toe, you feel me? <laughs> Get some fucking flyboy boots. <laughs> early, yeah. man, early, man. See that. Come on, I feel. I hear fire kick, yo. Yeah. All day, man. So, how you feel about Silverback Season 1, man? When you watched it, what, you, what was your thoughts on it? I watched it when I was lifted, filming it. That shit was real as shit. Yeah. <laughs> that shit was real as shit. All the interviews, <laughs> I sat there and watched every minute, even if it was a short joint, a long ass joint, I was drawing. I watched all that shit. Yeah, what you feel about it? You said it was some real shit? That shit was some real shit. It was just real. Yeah. It was like the streets raw, packed into a DVD. <laughs> like, burned on disc, like, the streets. It was real tough. But it's just crazy to see how quick, I mean, how fast of a run they had that ended just like that. I mean, and it was crazy because they was definitely, their chemistry together was crazy. I mean, they had a nice little rapport. And I mean, as far as musically and personality-wise on the camera, they both was real entertaining, man. So it was just crazy that that joint ended how it did. But, you know, at this particular time, so... Our stories intertwined, like I said, by them once they, we met them, they came down to Ev and Holly at us. Now when we was locked in with them ever since then, up until the point where they separated and we obviously still maintain relationships with both of them. So with Quilly in particular, at this time, you know, he was at known studio heavy. So when I went to uh, get him on Silverback Season 2 DVD, I met him at known studio. So that was my first time going there. My first time meeting no one and shit like that. This was at Frankfurt. So he used to be in that joint heavy. That's where he was recording that at the time. So after going up there, as I mean, I forget how, because it was a little minute ago. This is like, like I said, it's like 2011 around this time. So um, I don't remember exactly how each ended up linking with known, but each ended up linking with known like separately. I mean, uh, for some, some type of way, because I think H was up up that way at some point in time so you might have linked with him up there i don't remember but once he linked with no then h started being down known john heavy too and he start i mean fucking with that studio and recording up there and based though quill was already up there heavy them two started fucking with each other real heavy like and they used to be in that bitch like every fucking day all day crazy so Ben still we used to come up, so now we starting to come up there too and be up there, Ben still each up there, cool up. So now we hanging up there, John, too. Like, so now we up there heavy, like, all the time in the studio, of course. So we around Quill, like, real heavy, you know what I mean? 
so much so like them niggas in the studio so heavy like them niggas start learning how to record like and learning how to record other niggas staying up that joint and shit like that like basically in that joint heavy so we was up that joint heavy and we was around cool heavy built a nice little i mean we we already knew him from before that had these and i mean so we it was just like nothing for us to link and kick it and do shit together so had and i mean h and quill start you know they had a crazy chemistry and they started doing a lot of music together and they had like damn they had a project together that that never came out but you know at the time i think quill was working on he this when he was doing this new wave joints new wave cds and uh he got some songs with h on there i mean and then h put out a couple projects and he got some songs with quill on there so they ain't never like putting no official project out together but they got a bunch of songs and shit together like bangers and crazy shit bro so they had crazy like chemistry you know each older season he took that tuck that he muslim and quilly younger he took that tuck he muslim so they connected through that too like so they just had a, a crazy ass chemistry bro not just saying islam but you know that's one thing that they had in common that connected them i mean but they just had crazy chemistry music wise and all that and it was cool it was thorough i was like quill was a young boy i mean we was fucking with quill too so we got shit with quill Quill on our tapes, we got songs with him on our shit, and I mean, he took them same tracks and put them on, I mean, his joint, so, I mean, he got a track on, I mean, he did a track with my brother and my cousin, I mean, Stro, Fish and Stro, they got a song with Quill, and H on there too, and that's on one of them new wave tapes, I mean, that's on our joint too, and then I actually got a joint with Quill and H. I mean, a freestyle joint, a six foot, seven foot joint. That's on one of our tapes, and Quill put that on one of his new wave joints and shit. And that was a crazy joint for me, because, you know, I wasn't even planning on getting on no joint. I said him and H. And, uh, him and H had crazy rapport and shit, like. So I wasn't really playing on no, I was just in the studio with him, and he put the beat on, and they both was right into it and shit. I mean, and H just happened to look at me like, yo, you got something for it? I was like, in my head, I'm like, no, nah, I didn't have no for it, but I'm a race son for it. And yeah, it's fucking right. I'm going to get on this joint. It's H and Quill. Like, well, shit, sure. I'm going to get on this joint. So they already was done their verses and shit. So Quill go right in. And he actually, you know, started off with my name in the joint. I mean, uh, I've been a fly boy. Shout out to Showtime. Dodie told me we going to reach in no time. Crack line, oop line, oop line. I got them fiends on that powder like gold bond. So he started that shit off. I mean, through my, I mean, he shouted me on that joint. So was like, oh, that was heavy. I heard that. I mean, then each going. I mean, foot, seven foot, money like eleven foot. Uh, he started running that shit. Like, Damn. So by the time each was done this race, I had that. I mean, I hurry up, just put my joint together and shit. Like, cause I had to get on this shit. I couldn't miss it. I had to get right on this joint. So. Once H was done, then I went in there and did me, you know what I mean? And it was crazy because once the joint was done, I started sending it out to motherfuckers and shit, sending out different DJs, sending the motherfuckers, I mean, letting niggas hear it and shit. And a lot of niggas was saying I got over on them niggas with that joint. Like, that was crazy. He felt crazy to hear because that's H and Quill. Like, two of the hottest niggas at that time and two of the hottest niggas at this time still today. Like, in Philly history. Like, in my opinion, like, two of the hottest spitters we ever had out this joint. So for niggas to say, like, you know what I mean? Like, they feel like I got off on that joint. That was crazy. So you ain't never hear it. And niggas think I'm capping or gassing and all that. You don't even know who I am. Don't know nothing. I mean, go listen to that joint. It's on, it's on YouTube. Bunch of different YouTube um, channels got that joint up. Six foot, seven foot. You can just put Quilly Hollow Man. That should pop up. I mean, yeah. And you can hear me on that joint at the end. But yeah, Quill threw that on one of them new wave joints. And uh, we had that on one of our tapes. I mean, so...